Alright guys, welcome back. So this is just going to be a quick video to extend the enemies tutorial uh, in my platforming series uh, whereby a lot of people were asking how to make it so that the enemy doesn't just you know walk off of an edge like this and how to make them sort of turn around at edges. Um, sometimes you might want your enemy to do that. I mean this little setup here is pretty cool where he kind of you know falls down, falls to there and so on. So I'm going to set it up so you have control over that and you can change your enemy um, basically on the fly to either walk off of an edge or or not walk off of edges. So let's get in there. It's very simple. I'll show you how to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is something we'll be quite familiar with by now is we're going to create another variable called the fear of heights. And we're going to set to zero in our base enemy object. And basically this is going to be the flag that will turn on or off depending whether or not we want our enemy to walk off of edges. Uh, while it's on, uh, our enemy is going to have a fear of heights, so to speak, and is not going to want to walk off of any steep edges. Um, and while it's off, he's not going to care at all, and he'll, he'll walk happily off of any edges. And that's what's going to allow us to sort of turn this on and off. So now that we've, we've set up that flag super easy, we're going to come into our vertical collision code. going to make some space below where all the other stuff happens in the code. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to check to see in a certain spot um, whether or not we have a collision with the floor. We know, because we're inside these, these brackets here, that uh, we're already walking on the floor. That's a given because, you know... Uh, y plus v speed equals you know, object underscore wall. Um, but we're going to check to see if an area to the side of us has that collision as well in that same sort of spot. I'll put some images on the screen that kind of give a better impression than I can do with words of where exactly we're going to be checking. Basically in the direction that we're moving we're going to look like a few pixels below the player ahead to see if we're about to walk off an edge and it's really that simple. And if we are we're just going to times our direction value, dir, which is what we're using to decide which way we're walking uh, by minus one so that we flip around and go the other way. It's really that easy so we're going to start off just saying if fear of heights so making sure that that flag is turned on in the first place and uh, not position meeting x plus open bracket sprite Ooh. underscore width divided by 2 times dir so the first x coordinate is going to be our x plus half of the sprite width um, so like you know right at the, uh, times the direction so basically the pixel at the very very side of our sprite in whichever way that it's moving because our origin is centered kind of like in the middle of the sprite usually so we're going to add half of the sprite width which means we get to the edge of the sprite um, in whichever direction we're moving and then the y coordinate is going to be y plus sprite underscore height over two and then plus uh, a fairly arbitrary number, we're going to just say about 8. You could do this as a variable, it would probably be a better idea than just writing a hard number in here. But what this is going to do is say, instead of just at our feet, um, we're going to check by 8 pixels below um, the character's feet. And that's going to make it so that you can always still walk off of really, really tiny pixel edges. Like you can still like walk down like a small slope or something like that if you've got that sort of code going on, or like you know like just a very small gap. But um, the moment the gap gets you know uh, to eight eight pixels below us, there's no platform there. That means there's going to be a pretty significant drop, and we're not gonna we're not gonna want to go over that. You make sure whatever you put this number to, just make sure it's, we might run into problems if you set it to a value that's higher than like the height of any of your platforms or any of your surfaces that you walk on um, so just be mindful of that but otherwise um, you can kind of use that to say like you know how much of a fear of heights your character has I suppose and then the object that we're going to be looking for is obviously object underscore wall so assuming there's no collision there that means we're about to walk off of a specific edge therefore the whole fear of heights thing is going to come into play and we're just going to really quite simply do dir times equals minus one. We'll just flip that around. 
and that should make us change direction. Now, obviously our fear of heights is set to zero in this current enemy object, he doesn't have a fear of heights, but what we're gonna do, um, just to show the, the most basic way in which you can use this flag, is I'm gonna say insert object obj underscore enemy um, no fall, and I'm gonna make this a child of object enemy, so it's gonna inherit all of the enemy stuff, um, and set its sprite to be the enemy sprite as well. And then in the create event, I'm going to go over to control, I'm going to say call event, just to make sure it inherits the, the create event properly, because otherwise putting this event here would overwrite everything from the parent object. But as long as we call this, then it's going to do all the create event stuff that it would need to do by itself. And then I'm going to drop a code action in, and I'm just going to say fear of heights equals one, so that it overwrites the fear of heights equals zero from, that it would have inherited from the other enemy object. Now I'm going to create this enemy, and I'm just going to plonk him above the, the enemy that we have here that was walking off the edge, and we should see they behave differently. Yeah, so as you can see, one of them will walk happily off the edge, and the other one bounces off just as he would hit, get to the edge, and walks in the other direction. And so now you could turn that on and off, basically, to make you uh, walk... Um, either walk off of the edges or not. And you, you don't have to do that in the create event either, you could basically change that variable at any time to make it so that they uh, they walk off of edges or not. And as you can see, because we're checking that we're on the floor before doing it, you can see he falls without a problem like um, at the start, because he wasn't on the floor in the first place. So like if the floor was destroyed from underneath him, of course he would have to fall, he wouldn't want to just spin around on the spot frantically trying to trying to go the other way, which is what would happen if we didn't check that we were on the floor first. So yeah, that's pretty much how you do that. Um, I can just demonstrate very quickly as well. If I put like a wall less than eight pixels here, for example, that's like one pixel by the look of it. Oh, I accidentally put that one one higher up, so he walks over there. If I put that one down, one more. We should see he still walks down onto that. And then, like, <laughs> he can't walk up because I've got nothing in here for him to deal with, like, walking up slopes or whatever. But you can see he's still happy to move down very, very small gaps there. If you don't want him to be able to do that, then just reduce that number to, like, plus one or, or zero or whatever. And then he won't walk off of anything, no matter what height it is. So, yep, that's how you do that. Um, code, as always, will be available in the description. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. See you guys.